Um, this is a very brief list of the central services that I think are, can be perhaps of the most importance when it comes to coordinating your international research project. Um, so I will give a short presentation to start, and then I'm lucky to be joined by several of my colleagues representing these offices. Um, we'll be together here on the stage to answer questions that you have um, about what we do and how we can help. Um, so when, when you start an international research project, I, I, I say this because I, from the position of the research office, people tend to come to us with their, their problems, their challenges. Um, so if I could summarize them in one slide, um, they say, I'm not really sure about export laws, I'm not sure about exchange rates, how am I going to handle IP, how am I going to handle international laws that may govern my project, what about my ethics authorization, I know how to do that here, but what if part of my project takes place in the US or in Brazil or in China, then what happens? Um, these are real challenges. And, and I don't discount them at all, but I am here to tell you that we are here to support you in each and every one of these. And, and how do we do it? Um, if I can provide a visual perspective, if you think about your project as being the center, we surround you with support. So here you again you see the, the certain central services that I will present today. Uh, the research office is at the top, that's the office I represent. Um, we are going to help support any research project funded by a nonprofit or by a public funding body. Uh, the technology transfer office is our sister office in a lot of ways. They're going to do a very similar job, except the funding then would come from a company. They also, of course, handle licenses um, uh, from EPFL IP. The legal service, it's a VPA legal service. It's general across um, all of the VPA. It's not specific only to research. Um, however, of course, they're there to, to encourage you during the research projects as well. Um, human resources is here. You may ask, what does human resources have to do with international research? Often we get lots of questions about residence permits or about lengths of stay at EPFL or about visiting somewhere else and coming back. Human resources is, is, is a great solution for most of those problems. Um, the library provides really fundamental support both in publication as well as in data management. Um, we'll hear a bit more about that in a few slides. Um, the finance, the vice presidency for finance, of course, assists with financial management of the project in terms of controlling and reporting as well as um, accounting so, so and invoicing and things like this. Uh, education and outreach is also pretty critical. This is an office that is going to help bring incoming students to EPFL, including PhD students. So if you're recruiting students for your project and you want to, as we heard this morning, think a bit outside of the box in terms of where you recruit from, that's a service that can be at your support. Okay. Now, I'm really going to very briefly focus on each of these offices before I invite everyone to the stage. I will start with the research office, um, and because it's my home, Maybe I say a few more words here. Um, so our main job is to inform the community about what research funding uh, opportunities exist. And then once you're ready, we help you put together your proposal. We support you during the contracting phase as well as the running of your grants. And then um, we, of course, help with any ethics authorizations you may need help with. And finally, we provide a coordination service for large projects, where either we help with administrative um, processing of large projects, or we even act as like the grantor, so to speak, and we act as an internal funding agency. Um, this slide has some key facts about the Rio. I think this really helps to summarize what we do. I'll start in the very top, in the middle. Um, we handle 1,400 grant submissions per year. Of those, about 560 are successful for a total of about 248 million Swiss francs. So it's quite a, quite a large volume that comes through our office. Um, we also handle research and fellowship programs. Those are those internally managed programs, as well as 12 awards. Um, our lovely ethics team handles many applications from the HREC. You'll hear all about HREC in a later presentation today. Um, and we handle about 850 signatures per year. So we don't, all, obviously, we sign grant agreements. We also have uh, many other signatures we process. We do this with about 25 full-time equivalents. Um, and I'll finish with perhaps the most important number on this slide, which is the one in the middle. We have one contact point, research at epfl.ch, and if you have any questions related to your research funding, you can send them here. And we make every effort to respond to every question within 24 hours. So, don't ever forget the contact point. <laughs> 
If I could summarize our nut services in a nutshell, um, I'm going to do this with a few simple icons. Don't worry, this slide won't have very many words. Um, but I would like to orient you a bit to what we call like the, the award process. So when you're thinking about maybe getting research funding, we help you identify the funding, prepare your proposal. We call this the pre-award phase. Administer the awards, the award phase, surprise. <laughs> and then in the post-award phase, we support you too. So how do we do this step by step? Um, in the, in, to help you identify funding, we have information sessions. We also host many guides. Many of you may have seen the, the compendia that are on the research office table outside. We publish at least three compendia with e annual updates. We send out a newsletter that goes out every two weeks uh, to most of the, e the research community. We publish a memento channel of funding opportunities. And finally, we also maintain an institutional subscription to a search engine called Research Professional, where you can find um, funding opportunities that fit your needs. When you're finally ready to write your grant, we have a grant writing service, actually, which is a personalized service. Uh, we also have grant trainings, grant writing trainings we offer to PhDs and postdocs. Uh, we have applicant workshops that pair with toolkits that are call-specific for some of the bigger calls. SNSF project funding, SNSF Ambizione, for example, those have kind of predefined toolkits. Um, we also help with institutional endorsement. You may hear it called a host support letter. This is us. Uh, and we also, for those two-step programs where they have a first and a second stage at the application phase, the second stage often involves an interview. We prepare mock interview trainings for those. Okay, good news, you got your grant. Now what happens? Um, we help you administer the award. We're gonna review that agreement along with the VPA legal service. You'll hear from them later on. Um, we'll arrange for the institutional signature and then we, uh, of course, catalog all of this in grants database, which is managed internally by us. Um, in the post-award phase, once your grant is running, we're going to help you um, uh, with cost eligibility questions along with, of course, our colleagues in the controlling department from finance. Uh, Lovely timekeeping. I know Kronos is a love-hate relationship for many of you, but nonetheless, it is a requirement of many grants, and so um, the Kronos tool is actually maintained by the research office as well. And then for reporting, um, again, the financial reporting mostly takes place with the CDG, but for example, for scientific reporting, we can assist here too. Okay, many services. <laughs> so who are we? Who are the people? Who are the faces behind this? Like I said, we have 25 full-time equivalents. This is our summer retreat this year. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about how we're organized. Um, so first of all, I will introduce that m many people working in the research office, especially on these research and mobility funding teams, have, are, are trained in research. Many of them have PhDs, so it's not as if you're talking to a glorified secretary. I think m sometimes we have that reputation it's probably someone who's been exactly where you are. So we can really provide very personalized, very tailored service in that sense. Um, so in terms of how we're organized, uh, we have the, what we call the research and mobility funding teams. Those are divided according to where the funding body is. And then we have support teams that help us um, from, of course, the support side. Uh, we'll go through the research and mobility funding teams, um, but. What I will say is that we do divide our work according to where the funding body comes from. Oh, I got ahead of myself. First, I'll introduce our portfolio, um, which is here you see really just a very small sample of the funding bodies that we work with, that we process grants for, for the EPFL community. Um, and you may have come here today wanting a list of funding opportunities. You may have come saying, okay, where are the goods? Where's the list? And I will tell you that it's always going to be a very tailored answer depending on who you are, what research field you're in, what kind of funding you need, where you are in your career. So I'm not going to give you a list of funding opportunities today because it can never cover everything it needs to. Instead, I'll ask you if you have any questions to come to us, use that one contact point, research at epfl.ch, and we can do a funding tailored search for you. Okay, okay so who we are. Uh, we organize ourselves a bit into three teams depending on where the funding funder is. National funding is uh, one team. Uh, EU funding is anything coming from the European Commission. Uh, and then we have international funding, which is everything else. Um, you may ask, why are we all here today? Um, this is about international research. Why, why would I even spend time talking about the others? However, there are lots of lots of good opportunities, both from the European Commission and from national funding bodies for your international research. 
Um, so even though we're kind of the face of the event, we really work collaboratively all together to make sure you get the funding you need. So I will, however, start with the international team. I am lucky to be part of this team. Um, my, my name is Kristen. I think I forgot to introduce myself. Um, I work with Vanessa. She'll be here giving a presentation in just a few minutes about U.S. grants. She's our specialist there. Kelly is my co-organizer. She's in the text booth right now. Without her, none of this would have been possible. Um, and so in terms of what we do, again, you can see a small snippet of, of the funding bodies we work with. In our portfolio, U.S. federal grants are the most important player, though. Uh, we're joined by my colleagues on the European team. This is led by my colleague Pascal. Pierre-Yves will be here a little bit later telling us about EU funding as well. Um, so the biggest player here is going to be Horizon 2020, which has ended, but some of the grants are ongoing. Those are managed under the EU team, as well as uh, all the new funding under Horizon Europe. And finally, the national team. As you can imagine, this is, it's led by my colleague Marie Chiara. And as you can imagine, the bulk of EPFL funding falls under their portfolio. So they're a very busy team. Um, everything from the Swiss National Science Foundation, from Inno Suisse, from any Swiss foundation is, is going to fall under their purview. Um, I will take one moment to highlight one service, which is actually transversal, so it transverses all three of those research and mobility funding teams, and that is our grant writing service. So here we have both a personalized service, you're writing a grant, you're preparing your proposal, you need a little bit of help. Maybe you're not really quite sure about the way you're angling it, maybe you just want help with technical writing, maybe you're a young researcher and you're just starting to write your first grant. So, this is a really nice personalized service for anyone at EPFL. Generally, it's a first-come, first-served basis, um, but it's, it's also it's, it's free of charge. So, so write to us if you have any needs for grant writing. Um, we also help with coordination. So let's say you do want to expand your international network. You now have a network of people. You have a funding opportunity you want to apply for, but it's going to take a lot of coordination and a lot of administrative management to make that happen. That's where we can help. We have a whole team of project officers that can be kind of lent to you and your project at some percentage to help coordinate those projects. Okay? In addition, they would then work along with the grant writers if you needed to help coordinate the writing of the proposal. Complementing the grant writing service are also trainings. We offer trainings to PhD students, to postdocs, and soon to professors through many, um, many videos. Okay? Um, so I got a, a little ahead of myself and explained the program management just, just a bit, but in general this is going to be um, the assistance for the coordination of a large project. So you may ask what kind of admin burden are you talking about, what can you help me with? Any of the things you see here, from preparing the budget, managing the costs and deadlines, allocating those funds, uh, managing your research data, I'm sure my library colleagues are here happy to see this one, um, consolidating your scientific reports, uh, monitoring cost eligibility, uh, and finally consolidating those reports. Because what you will get from the financial service will not be a report you can necessarily submit directly to the funder, but will help you to consolidate it. My colleagues on the Ethics Affairs team are here to help you not only in determining which kind of authorizations you need for certain types of research, but also to give more general guidance. What are ethical principles in research? How can we best uphold them? Um, even outside of an authorization, how can we still conduct things with the best practices? Um, and so my colleague Esther will actually give a presentation a little bit later this afternoon summarizing more about how they can assist. Finally, uh, we would be nowhere without our admin and IT support system. This is the team that is behind GrantsDB, behind Kronos, uh, and many of our other informatic tools, ServiceNow, our, our mailbox where we receive mails, and uh, they really keep the, the ship afloat. Okay, um, and with that, I'd like to shift to talking about our, our other, the other central services that we um, that are present here today that I think will participate in our, in our Q&A panel. Um, first, I'll talk about the Technology Transfer Office. This is headed by André Crotini. Um, and so, as I mentioned, if the Research Office is your home for all funding that comes from nonprofits and uh, public funding bodies, TTO is the equivalent for funding that comes from companies. And as you can imagine, this requires a slightly different nuance in the work. Um, IP is often kind of at the forefront of these discussions when it comes to a research agreement. Um, we want to protect both your foreground IP, of course, but also your 
background IP. We urge you not to forget about background IP, its importance too. Um, and then finally, questions sometimes come up about export laws and dual use in both research agreements under the TTO and by the Rio whenever there's international partners. So we both provide that kind of support for you. Uh, in conjunction with the VPA Legal Services, of course, uh, we would be nothing, nowhere without our team of, of lawyers. Um, so the Legal Service is also represented here today. Um, so they're going to provide support to the EPFL research community. Um, number one you'll see is the review, preparation, and negotiation of contracts. So here they will kind of fight for you, fight for EPFL, when it comes to making sure that we're treated fairly in those research agreements. Um, they also give more general legal advice if you need it. Uh, I think they're quite happy to step on the phone with you to give you advice. Um, at EPFL, we know that the professor is, is king often, but nonetheless, um, we're, we're there to kind of guide you to what we think is the best way to, to operate your, your lab and your projects. Um, finally, um, a member of the legal service will always be a member of the Human Research Ethics Committee, so they'll be there to also give guidance in that realm. We're also supported very much by human resources. Again, you might ask yourself, what does human resources have to do with my research project? Um, so we have lots of questions that come up about potentially recruiting people. I want to recruit this person from this country. Is this possible? Is a residence permit something that we can actually obtain? Some people want to take breaks from Switzerland to go abroad to do like a visiting stay abroad. Is the research permit going to be okay? Um, sometimes uh, length of stay at EPFL comes into question because in certain types of uh, in positions, the employment contract can only be of a limited duration. We help assess these questions with the human resources to make sure your project runs smoothly. Finally, the library. The library clearly does much, much more than the two items I have listed here, publishing support and research data management. Um, I think these are the two that are the most pertinent for international research. So in terms of publishing support, they'll help to, you know, answer any questions you have about publishing and open access. Um, I think this is really a, um, a, high, a high point of importance for EPFL, is open access of our research results. So the library will help do make this possible. There, there's some funding, for example, that can be available for green open access publication, but they'll also help guide you to the correct journals in a way uh, to make sure that the research is as open as possible. Um, they also provide very nice advice for negotiating with publishers. Um, your grant, for example, might have a limitation about um, the embargo that can be present on your publication. And say, you know, if you have EU-funded research results, often they must be published, you know, with some uh, maximum embargo of six or 12 months. And um, the library can actually help you to negotiate with the publisher to make sure that that embargo can be met to be in compliance with your grant. So we work, they work very closely with us on these. Research data management is also critical. I'm sure many of you know that the SNSF now requires all research projects submitted to have a data management plan along with them. Um, the research data management team at the library is invaluable for this. Um, they provide really excellent support. They can help point you to the right data repositories. They can teach you best management practices for your data. Um, and it, overall, they're also very, very kind and very nice. So <laughs> I encourage you to have a chat with them. Uh, my colleagues in, in the finance department um, play a critical role, a role that is probably overlooked and um, undervalued, I would say, across campus, but nonetheless, uh, without them, uh, I think most grants couldn't really function. Uh, two, two main offices, I think, that are pretty important here are the CDG, the controlling department. They're going to make sure that the spending on your grants is uh, appropriate. Um, they're going to control for the cost eligibility. They're also going to help to compile the reports when the time comes. Uh, the accounting department is also pretty important, especially when we consider uh, international funding, because the one, they help determine the exchange rates. So the way this works is that EPFL has an officially published exchange rate every month, and that is the exchange rate that will be used for any payments incoming to EPFL. Um, so this is determined by the accounting service, but what they also do is to publish a recommended exchange rate for budgeting. So let's say you're making a project with a US partner that must be submitted in US dollars. The finance department actually just yesterday updated the exchange rate for US dollars to CHF that they recommend for budgeting. However, we know that there can be um, how this works in practice is that you make a budget, but what actually happens is when you receive the money, 
that monthly exchange rate is going to be what's actually going to stand. And so we want to use a conservative exchange rate when we make the budget so that we don't get any terrible surprises when the project is actually running in terms of our funds that come in in another currency being converted to CHF. Okay. I can also help answer any questions about this if you have them later or during the panel. They all, oh, one also very important thing that the accounting department does is handle invoicing, and this also means sometimes international partners will have a certain invoicing portal they really want to use. You can only issue us invoices here. We won't accept your paper invoice by PDF, and the, the accounting department manages EPFL's profiles on all those platforms too. Um, finally, I wanted to include um, a slide for education and outreach. Um, so this is going to be the department that is going to handle kind of incoming, so I, I, if, I, I took the liberty of giving it a title, Come to EPFL. So they kind of promote EPFL abroad for students to come here. And this is again at the ma bachelor, master, and PhD levels. So recruiting international talent to EPFL at the PhD level. Okay, and I didn't include a slide for this, but the doctoral school also plays an important role here because now they've actually launched the EPFL Doc Mobility Program. This is a nice program that allows doctoral students from EPFL to spend a short amount of time abroad, I think up to six months abroad, and they have a new call that um, was just released with a deadline of 1st December. 